so I'm a pediatrician, and so I particularly know about issues that affect children. Um, what is particularly concerning about the contamination of the water in Flint is that pregnant women and infants and children are at greatest risk from lead exposure, particularly through water contamination, because children are smaller, and so they absorb more lead per body weight. Um, and then there has been a lot of talk about how vulnerable communities are particularly at risk, and health-wise, uh, that's the case as well. So if you have a community where you don't have access to the foods that mitigate lead exposure, like foods high in calcium, iron, or vitamin C, so fresh fruits and vegetables, for example, um, then you don't have access to the foods that mitigate your exposure. Um, if you can't afford to purchase alternate water sources, then you are um, disproportionately exposed to tap water. Um, so it's no surprise, and as many people have said, this is something we see across the country where low-income communities of color are kind of disproportionately affected by issues like this. And so for kids, what we're really worried about is how lead affects behavior and cognition or intelligence. So while not every child will be affected, we're concerned about um, whether or not these kids will be able to reach their full educational potential which then affects their earning potential, which then affects uh, how they can provide for their future generations. I mean, there are even studies of lead exposure for pregnant women that show that the grandchildren of the in utero baby still have signs of lead exposure. So what we're talking about is not just giving water to people. We are talking about lifelong wraparound services that prioritize the needs of low-income communities who are disproportionately affected. That includes educational supports, behavioral supports, um, and access to healthy food, um, and early childhood interventions, preschool, for everyone in the area.